there's an amazing story here in Mark 11, and I, I want to give you some thought to this before we get started. When I get into this message, you're going to think, I have lost my mind. But I'm going to prove what I say from the Bible. Is that okay? Is it, it's okay, right? All right? Have you ever noticed in life, things don't always go your way? Let me be honest. Things not always going to go your way. You're going to marry some ugly guy with face on, uh, hair on his face. You know what I'm saying? But there's some weird things that can happen. You can have parents that make you go to church. They ain't always going to go your way. Amen. But let me say this to you and, and try to understand this. Do you realize that God can be grieved? Now stay with me. You, you can never invite me back. You don't want to. Everything does not always go the way God wants it to go either. Here's a story in Mark 11 where it just did not go the way Jesus wanted it to go. Everything in life does not always go your way. <clears throat> a young man got up on a Sunday morning, and he fell on his face, and he said, God, I'm so sorry. I've been asking you for a wife. I've asked for a certain size, a certain shape, a certain color hair. Certain color eyes. I've asked you, and I, God, I've just sort of put you in a box. Asking you for the kind of woman I want. Now, God, I still want a wife, but I don't want to put you in the box. Lord, I, I, I pray that you would give me a wife of your choice and not mine. He said, God, this is what I'm going to do. He said, I am going to go to church this morning, and I'm going to be the first one there. And I'm going to be on the second row on this side here. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to pray. And God, whoever it is you want me to marry, make it clear to me, please. He gets there, he comes to the second row, he sits down. This most gorgeous, beautiful woman that you've ever laid eyeballs on came in and sat right beside him. His toenails literally curled up. Did I tell you I got a 23-year-old grandson by the name of Josh? Oh, okay, okay, just, tell, just saying, just, just saying. And he sat there, and she came and sat by him. And he, he can't even talk straight. And she said, are you a member of this church? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. And she said, you know everybody. He said, yes, ma'am. She says, so I'm going to be honest with you. When I came to this church today, I'm looking for a husband. Oh, my soul, his heart quit beating. She said, this may sound strange to you, but I need your help. You know everybody here. He said, yeah. She said, I'm looking for a man that's part Native American, part Indian. Hmm. She said, I'm also looking for a man that's part Jewish, part of God's chosen people. Hmm. She said, but I also would like a southern boy. And she said, by the way, what's your name? He said, my name is Geronimo Goldstein, but you can call me Bubba. <laughs> hmm. Josh! Everybody okay? I'm going to have fun whether you do or not. You might as well laugh and have a good time. Everything does not always go your way. That right there we could go home and say, you know what, that helped me. Because not everything goes our way. Let me give you the story and we'll talk about it. Mark chapter 11. Beginning in verse 11. <clears throat> and Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple when he had looked round about upon all things. And now the evening tide was come. He went out unto Bethany with 
the twelve. He and the disciples are moving along. Okay, watch this carefully in verse 12. And on the morrow when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time of the figs were not yet. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now skip down if you would. All the way down to verse 14. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, told, I told you wrong. To verse 20. Let's go to verse 20. <clears throat> and in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter calling to remember, said to him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou curseth is withered away. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, uh, and, and be cast uh, into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. <clears throat> and when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. Now go back with me, if you would, to verse 13. Now you're going to need your pens tonight. Mark some things. Verse 13, the Bible says, And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves. You know what got Jesus' attention? Jesus and the disciples are walking along, and in the far distance, he saw a beautiful tree with big, beautiful leaves. He said, man, that tree is alive. That tree is well nourished. That tree has got all the leaves that you could want. Not one dead one on it. They're all green. They're all beautiful. And because of the tree having the leaves, it absolutely attracted Jesus to it. Now listen to me carefully. Ready? You've got the right pastor. You've got the right kind of church. You've got the right kind of Bible. You've got the right kind of music. You've got the right, uh, right kind of clothes. And those are leaves. And nothing's wrong with leaves because that's what gets Jesus' attention. Are you with me so far? When a man and a woman... Do you realize that this year my wife and I will be married 53 years? That's longer than most people have been alive. Don't you, don't you realize that when people work through their tough times... Listen, I was married five days before I went to Vietnam. Is anybody listening to me? You, 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 <laughs> that, that woman right there lived in a travel trailer without running water and electricity. While I worked 60 to 72 hours a week in town, her and those little boys would take an old pickup truck and hold water. And she'd take a five-gallon bucket to clean with and, and, and take, uh, have to take a bath out of them, have to cook with. And make sure the kids are clean for school. So this man could have a ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. That is Leeds. Are you staying with me now? Well, let's look at that again. Look at verse 13. And on the morrow, that's 12, verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came. If happily he might find anything there. On. He said, this tree has got all the right kind of leaves. It's nourished well. It's good looking. It's, it's got the right kind of leaves. There's no dead ones. They're all green. Everything about this tree is great. Look at all those leaves. And when he got to it, it was nothing there but leaves. Does anybody listen to me now? You mad yet? Look at this carefully. Look at this carefully. Verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came if happily he might find anything 
their own. When it comes to the us kind of people that are, have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, not because of some religion, we got the right church, we got the right music, we got the right preacher, we got the right clothing, we got the right Bible. And he sees that and it draws him to us and he comes and wow, wow, and he gets here and that's all we are. That's convicting. Back to verse 13. And seeing a fig tree of four of heaven leaves, he came if happily he might find anything of their own. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. You still with me? Give me a few minutes. This is what I want to preach. If you're keeping titles, if you're recording and keeping titles, this is what I want to preach tonight. More than leaves. More than leaves. I do not know why God put this in a book. Let me explain to you. Let me explain before you get upset with me. He said, if I told you everything, the world couldn't contain the books it would take. You think of the Sears Tower. You think of the Empire State Building. And in Saudi Arabia, with all their oil millions, they decided they was going to outdo all the other countries. And they have now built the largest building, the highest skyscraping building in the world. Can you imagine there's not anywhere to walk between them? It's nothing but books touching each other as high as you can think. He said, if I told you everything, it would take that many books. But boy, you let me tell you something tonight. This will make you shout. But he did give us one book. And I ain't playing with that book. I'm not going to add to it. I'm not going to take anything away from it. Here's the problem. Either Jesus is the final authority or you are. You see, if you're the final authority, then you get to determine if it's right or wrong. And if you like it, it's okay, no matter what it is. If you dislike it, it's wrong, no matter what. But if God is the final authority, then His Word is the final authority. He gets to say what's right or wrong. And by the way, if God's for it, you should be for it. If God's against it, you should be against it. Amen. So you think about that. The world could not contain the books, but he gave us one book. And in that book, <laughs> this is what puzzles a, 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 a dumb as a stump fellow like me. Why would he put this type of story in there? And I'm hoping to explain to you tonight why. More than leaves. Look at verse 14. I'm going to give you something where you're going to think I've lost my mind. Look at verse 14. Get your pens ready. This, this, is, this is too good to mess up. Get your pens ready. And Jesus, what's that third word? Underline that word answered. Now don't take your eyes off that verse 14. I'm going to show you something. It's going to shock you. And Jesus answered and said unto what? It. You know what I just read to you? Let me read it again. So it's going to be shocking to you. And Jesus answered and said unto it. Watch this carefully. Jesus is carrying on a conversation with a tree. That don't shock you? The first time I read that, I went, wait a minute. Jesus Christ is carrying on a conversation with a tree. He answered it, so it must have spoke to him. He said, unto it. You're looking at me like I've lost my mind. Look at verse 14. And Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. I, I honestly believe this, folks. I believe the disciples of Christ, and even in 2021, will hear the word of God. And it makes a difference in our lives. More than leaves. Why would God give us this story of him having a conversation with a tree. That makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, if, if, 
the world could contain all the books in the world if he told us everything, but he, he took time out to tell us this story. It must be pretty important. Some of you are going, hmm, I don't know about this guy. Hmm. Why? Here's, here's the story that I believe with all of my heart. More than leaves. Why did God give us that story? Number one, ready? Write these down. Number one, the Lord expects fellowship with his creation. The Lord expects fellowship with his creation. We have got time to brush our teeth, comb our hair, uh, look pretty, put on clothes, and run out of the house to go to work or go to school, but we don't have time for God. We still believe the Bible in 2021, don't we? What place is Jesus supposed to have in Colossians 1.18? What place is Jesus supposed to have in our lives? That in, in what? All things. Right or wrong? Does that mean, that, does that mean if all things, does that mean the first part of the morning? The reason God gave this story, I believe with all of my heart, is the Lord expects fellowship with His creation. Now let me quit, let me quit preaching and start meddling for a minute. I want you to give me one good reason why God should meet with you. Now, especially young people, some of you say, because I'm good. That ain't what God said about you. God said there's none good. Uh, because I'm saved. Really? Because I'm a believer. The Bible says the devils will leave and tremble. I mean, think about what I'm saying now. Get mad if you want to, but think about it. Give me one good, not, not a reason. Give me one good reason why God should spend time with you. And if you'll be honest with yourself, you can't come up with a good one. Watch this carefully. When I ask you to give me one good reason why God should spend time with you, we can't come up with one. But glory to God, He will. <laughs> oh, He'll spend time with us, won't He? He said, You have not because you asked not. I, I don't know about you, and, and you can take this any way you want to take it. You can call me a holy roly. I don't care what you call me. Listen to me carefully. Very well. I like to get glory bumps. I like to hear a song that moves me. I like, I like to go, whoo, whoo, glory. Yeah, man. I like to hear somebody uh, uh, preach the truth. Did you know, I don't care how young you are, you could not live long enough to preach all the Bible. But yeah, we've got a bunch of preachers out here mad at each other over stupid things, preaching their opinions. And you know I'm telling you the truth. But to think that the God of heaven, <laughs> whew, my wife has her little corner spot in our house. My wife gets up at 5 every morning. She starts doing that. She's got a spot to spend time with God. I get up every morning at 5 o'clock, but once I go to the bathroom, I go back to bed. But I do have a spot where I go to every morning of my life. When I fail, even Sunday morning. And God shows up. I, I, listen to me carefully. Say what you want. I lost it. Don't sit down on the job, dummy. What happens when you sit down on the job? Huh? But I'm thrilled to death. But I'd be thrilled, more thrilled if I could do how to work this thing. Did I tear up your equipment, fellas? I'm thrilled to death that I can pray for America. I can pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I can pray for Israel. I can pray for our supporting churches. I can pray for uh, uh, preachers that I know. Listen to me carefully. Uh, in, in the last four or five weeks, we've had four preachers pass away who started their church from nothing. And now the church don't know what to do. I can pray for those who are sick. 
I can pray for my church, my people. I can pray for my family. Did, did you know I want all of my lost loved ones to get saved? And I want those who are saved to get into a good church? And, and I, I picked on her all day, uh, all week about my grandson. You know how I pray for Josh? And I, I mean this in a good way, okay? God, give Josh our kind of woman. You say, you're selfish. Okay. I have seen people have a match made at whatever college you went to, and it didn't last, even though they were saved. So I, I've got opportunity to pray that. Watch this carefully. Here's the good thing about it. God will spend time with me if I take the time to spend time with him. Did you know that God will be as good to you as you'll let him be? Sometimes we just don't let God be good to us. We're too big of a hurry. We get ahead of God. We, we run around him. Number two. Oh, by the way, let me read verse 22 one more time, then I'm going to show you something. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Why did he give us this story? Number one, the Lord expects fellowship with his uh, cre creature. And number two, the Lord wants us to have faith in him. Now watch this carefully. Yeah, here's where you're going. I'm going to lose you if you don't listen. The very faith it takes to get saved, a person already has before they get saved. Ooh, well, by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. The faith it took you to call upon the Lord and ask Him to save you, big boy, didn't come from you. That's how good God is. I mean, think about it. Think about it. And God wants you to have faith in Him, but watch this carefully. What He's teaching His disciples here is, I want you to have more than saving faith. Thank God for saving faith. Saving grace. But God is saying, hey, fellas, I want you to have more than just saving faith. What, what, if, you had a, uh, what if you had somebody got saved to come to church, they didn't like it, and they left, and you never saw them again? And everybody was like that. What kind of church would you have? Because God wants a group of people, to, yes, to get saved. But he wants you to have more than saving faith. More than that. that God expects more than that. Uh, uh, he wants you to have a, 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 a faith that, how, would you, how, how do you say it? Well, just how I said he wants God wants you, if you're saved, to have faith that moves you. Moves you to read your Bible and pray every day. Moves you to be faithful to church. Moves you to give somebody a gospel tract. Moves you to tell somebody about Jesus. That's the kind of faith God has, wants you to have. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Do you realize that the more preaching I listen to, the more faith I get? Not because I'm something special and got good ears to hear. No, it's just a promise from God. It's a promise from God. Why did God give us this story? He expects fellowship with His creation. The Lord wants you to have faith in Him more than saving faith. Number three, the Lord wants you to have fruit to minister to others. This is tree had the most beautiful leaves, the prettiest tree. Now, can you imagine you're walking along and there's trees everywhere, but that one tree got his attention. My wife and I, and no offense to anybody in Kentucky, nobody offense from my wife and I to any of you, but listen carefully. Sunday morning, we got here late, we was there seven hours late because of a snowstorm in Denver flying in Saturday. And it was dark, pitch black. We started leaving the motel to drive to this church. And we were just shocked. How many churches there are here? Do you realize there's more independent fundamental Baptist churches in the city limits of Salt Lake City, Utah, than there is in the whole state of New Mexico? Now picture that. As we were coming over here, we saw all these churches. As Jesus is coming down there through all the trees... He saw one. You know why? It had the right leaves. Good. Good. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. 
but he wanted more from the tree than just leaves. Why would he give us this story about him having a conversation with the tree? Because God wants you and I to have fruit to minister to others. How many of you ever gone to a fruit tree? Apple tree, pear tree, plum tree, any other kind of tree? I'm losing it again, though. No. Uh, uh, how many of you ever gone uh, around any kind of a fruit tree? Raise your hand. Figs, plums, it don't matter. Okay. Have you ever, uh, isn't it amazing to, when the, 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 the fruit starts getting ripe? Some of it will fall on the ground. It, the most amazing thing I've ever seen, when you get to a tree producing fruit, once in a while it'll take its limb and reach down on the ground or reach over here and pick one and start eating it. Have you ever seen a tree eat its own fruit? You understand that the tree is producing fruit for others. Are you still with me? Think about it. Now, you can be just leaves and never produce any fruit like this tree. But the reason God expects you to produce fruit is for others. Think about this. A dopehead drunk marine. Mean enough to go walk into a bar and stick a knife in you and just walk around you. In and out of trouble. Hell on earth for my wife. Just teenage kids. Mean. I care about nothing but me. People in that area was afraid of me. And two men and two women decided, bless God, they're knocking on our door anyway. I cussed them out, ran them off. Next Thursday night, cussed them out, ran them off. Third time they came. What is it you people want? All churches and preachers want money. And they said, what we want is we don't want you to go to hell. I said, you've got to be the dumbest people that ever lived. I just came back to Vietnam fighting communists who don't believe there's a God. If God's going to let anybody go to heaven, he's going to let me go. Well, the Bible showed me it's not of works. Thank God for soul winners. Amen. They gave, they gave me a gospel tract. And, uh, <laughs> and I love this. They, they gave me a gospel tract and a Bible. Because I told them I wouldn't believe nothing but in the Bible. I sat down one day with that Bible and that gospel tract, and I looked up every verse in the Bible, and guess what? They was all there. Would you do me a big favor? If you're going to give somebody a gospel tract, make sure what it says is in the book. Please, please. What am I saying to you? I'm saying that I got saved because there was somebody that had more than leave. They produce fruit. Amen. Tree does it, eat its own fruit, it produces it for others. Now, let me quit preaching a minute and meddle again. Ready? Is there any evidence in your life that you are helping someone other than you? Well, I've got a job, I'm working. Did you get a paycheck? then you're helping you. Mm. I married a woman that could cook. That's helping you. So think about it. Hurriedly, because i got to preach and get out of here. Can you, seriously, is there any evidence at all in your life you're helping someone other than you? We, we come to church, stay with me. We come to church, we listen to the preaching, and we take in. Did you realize the preacher is going to be responsible for everything he preaches? Well, guess what you're responsible for? What you do with it. And, and you come in here and you just suck it in. You get up every morning and read your Bible and pray and you suck it in. And then you call the church and say, can y'all help me pay my electric bill? We take in, but do we put out? We live in New Mexico. A small rock in New Mexico, a small one, would be about this big. And they're real deep in the ground. They're at least an inch deep. 
And if you dig a hole, I don't care if it's a backhoe, you could forget digging a hole in New Mexico with a shovel. Ain't going to happen. They make, we, we have big steel bars that call rake bars and pry one loose so we can get it out of there. One day my wife comes to me and said, Babe, don't try that. I let her call me that, not you. She said, let's get some blueberry bushes and stuff and let's plant over in this stuff by the place by garden. And I think, yeah, we'll do that one day. It's like telling God, yeah, I'll do that one day. And I said, yeah, we'll do that one day. She said, no, 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 I want to do it now. And you married man, just nod your little heads, but don't say yes real loud or you'll be in trouble. Happy wife, happy life. You know what I've learned of being married 53 years? You better have two bathrooms. <clears throat> uh, I live one mile from the church. We still have to have two cars. Because I'm a Marine. I've got to be two hours early. She thinks if you're 15 minutes late, you're early. Amen. Wow. I got two kids to dress. You got none. You didn't know last night you had two kids to get ready? And I also found this out, guys, and please listen carefully. I found out you can be happy or you can be right. Amen? So she says, what I want you to do is go get the backhoe. And I want you to dig two holes on this side of that door of the woodshed and, 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 and two over here. When you dig a hole this big to plant a blueberry bush or a fruit tree in, it winds up, because of all the rocks falling in, big enough to bury somebody. I tell everybody all the time, make me mad if you want to. I'll take the back hole and dig a hole and put you in there. And I'll just barely bury you, and I'll take one of the dead horses or something. I'll lay it on top of you and bury the whole thing. That way we're coming out machines and find, oh, that's a horse, and they'll never find you. But anyway, I tucked the back hole, and I, I began to dig these holes. And, and uh, she said, now... Go down along the river and get some of that topsoil and fill those holes up. Okay. Now what? Go to hell. No, 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 no. no. What's that? It's, it's a place you go. To. It's, it's like hell. Oh, Walmart. She said, go to Walmart. <coughs> she said, go to Walmart and get several bags of peat moss. So I go down. I, I think they call them bales. I don't know, but I got these bags in the back of the truck. Went home. We took that topsoil and we took that peat moss. We mixed it all up. We got a, a, a thing called root stimulator. It smells like rotten vitamins. You know, it, it's supposed to be vitamins on steroids is what it's supposed to be. And, and you mix it with water, you pour it in there. Now, if you dig a hole in New Mexico where it's dry, you could put... 14 and a half days of water on it without turning it off and you cannot even tell you watered it. And we did that. We planted these blueberry bushes and, and, and these fruit trees. Watch me now. Stay with me. And we'd go out with this root stimulator and mix it with water and, and we'd water it. And that, that tree would go... <laughs> for days and days and days. Two or three years goes by. These blueberry bushes, prettiest ones you've ever seen. Boy, we did it right. They budded out, the leaves popped out. <laughs> no fruit. It never one time produced any fruit. Never! It was pretty. It, the leaves were pretty. The outside appearance was wonderful. We have a lady in our church who has two degrees. She's a school teacher and a scientist. We told her about it, and she cut a limb, looked at it. You know what was happening? Stay with me now. It was beautiful on the outside and dead on the inside. 
Is any of this making sense to you? Thank God for the leaves. They're pretty. But God wants more than leaves. And we've got a lot of people that are sucking in all the good from God. But doing nothing with it. I know you don't have to have me back. Then I want you to notice something back in verse 13. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came half he might find anything therein. And when it came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Watch this carefully. For the time of figs was not yet. Folks, you're looking at a man who believes that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. Now I believe that you don't even talk to me about it after church. If you're not going to change my mind, just make me mad. I believe that Jesus knew everything. I believe that he knew it wasn't time for figs, but yet he wanted figs. He, 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 he wanted figs, but it wasn't time for figs. He wanted figs, period. Now watch this carefully. Stay with me. The Lord wants his timing, not yours and mine. Do you remember this man named Lazarus? Died and he sent for Jesus. Well, it's going to be wonderful. Hey, neighbors, what y'all see this? When Jesus get here, he's going to Lazarus rise up. And he's going to pop up. <laughs> but the day went by and Jesus didn't show up. And the second or third day went by and Jesus didn't show up. But four days later, he showed up. And they began to blame Jesus. You know why? Things don't always go the way you want them to. If you'd have been here. If you'd have done this. And if you'd have done that. Jesus said one word. What you scares me. He called him by name. One word. Lazarus. <laughs> Come forth. You know what Lazarus thought? Not, 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 don't matter what his sister thought. You know what he thought? Jesus showed up just on time. See, you see, God wants his timing and not your timing. This is for people 40 or younger. Ready? You mean well. You're dumb as a stuff. You're dumb as a day old goat, but you mean well. When you get 13, you go retarded, and you stay that way till you're 40. The day you turn 40, you look back just yesterday, and you say, that preacher was right. But if you're 40 or younger, the world has messed you up. They gave you plastic money. And you mean well. Honestly, I love you. You mean well. But this is your philosophy. As soon as I can get out of debt, I'm going to serve God. You don't you think that if, if the devil knows that, he ain't going to let you get out of debt? Some of you young people, when you get a credit card in your hand, you, you, you turn into a Confederate general. Charge! <laughs> One more, and we'll quit. Is that fair enough? I, I like church. I like music. I like preaching. But matter of fact, I'm going to say this to you, and I hope you take it the right way because I love you. You tell me what you think about preaching, and I'll tell you what kind of Christian you are. Amen. Let me, let me give you one more. I, I know it's Wednesday, it's late. Why would he tell us this? Number 525, whatever we're on. The Lord wants the fantastic from you. It was not time to produce fruit. It's not time for people to get saved. Maybe your, your mom or your dad. I pray, by the way, I pray for my daddy 17 and a half years before he got saved. I'm a first generation Christian. My mother had left us, and I come from a divorced home. 
but we was able to make sure she got saved later. But listen to me carefully. The, the Lord wants the fantastic, the supernatural from you and I. Uh, 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 God is saying, listen, I want fruit when it's not time for fruit. Oh, we're going through a pandemic. People scared for you to knock on their doors. Scared for you to run the buses. I got every excuse in the world. But God wants fruit when it's not time for fruit. He wants the fantastic. He, he wants the supernatural. Uh, he, he wants something to happen when it's not supposed to happen. Amen. And we need to realize that. I want fruit when it's not time for fruit. I want it when it's not supposed to happen. I want it when it's out of the ordinary. Wouldn't it be nice for us to do our part, show up on a Sunday, and the preacher says, guys, listen, go to the fellowship hall. We've got to have some chairs put out. And you're not even expecting it to happen. Amen. I've got a couple in my church. In 1988, a man wrote a little red book, and it said 88 reasons why Jesus Christ is coming back in 1988. Are you listening? I had never met these people. I had never seen them face to face. They knocked on our door. Weeping. Had that little book with them. And they waved the book at us and said, listen, we want to get saved. We don't want to go to hell. And they said, this is a getting saved place. Amen. Now, we're just going to have supper and, and, and watch TV. We have not planned on this at all. But I thank God they know that you can go to your house and it's a getting saved place. They can go to this church and it's a getting saved place. Amen. God, why would you give us this story? Because he expects fellowship with his creation. How much fellowship do you and God have? Number two, he wants you to have faith in him more than saving faith, but a faith that moves you. Number three, the Lord wants you to have fruit to minister to others. Number four, God wants you to have fruit, but it's not time for fruit. And God wants you to surrender to him and let him have his time instead of your time. I preach out a lot. I see a lot of different churches. I see a lot, of, a lot of different things. Sunday morning, I watch people come to this altar, and it blessed my heart. You come if you if you come to our church, you'll see this. We have more people at the altar than we have in the pews. There's only two reasons to come to the altar. Let me give them to you real fast. Number one, if God speaks to your heart about something, you ought to come to the altar. There should be nothing between you and God. Second reason you should come to the altar if God doesn't speak to you. Because that ought to bother you. God, you used to speak to me in church. What, what's going on? What am, I, am I that backslidden? What, God, what, what's going on? If God doesn't speak to you, you're going to knock somebody down getting down here. But if he does speak to you, you ought to have enough Christian character to come down. You've heard the sermon tonight. More than leave. And I'm not getting on to anybody. You may, be, you may have just gotten saved. You may be a, a, a babe in Christ. I do not know. Thank God for the leaves. Thank God for the right Bible, the right church, the right preacher, the right clothing, the right, the right preacher, I mean the right church. You know what I'm saying? Thank God for the leaves. But God wants more than just leaves. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.